Oh snap, it is live stream time. Happy holidays everyone, hope you're doing well. Happy Hanukkah, Merry Christmas. We are getting this holiday season started. We're so glad to be back today talking about post-cruise depression, mostly the cures. Uh oh, my computer just did it again. Let me stop that real quick, sorry guys. Um, so yeah, Mr. Cruise Tips TV, would you like to roll the chat for me real quick? And I will let everybody know that today's episode is sponsored by CruiseLine.com, where you can compare cruise prices with easy to use cruise search. Would like to wish CruiseLine.com once again a very, very happy five year anniversary this year. They're celebrating an awesome five years and we're so stoked for them. Hopefully you have checked out their website lately and or Shipmate to plan and get stoked on your next cruise. So. We have a big thank you to you guys today, and that is to thank you so much for helping us get to 25,000 subscribers. We did it, yay, we're so excited. Most of you, yay, my son's here and he's clapping with me. Isn't it exciting, yay. So thank you very much, you guys, for making that happen for us. It's, um, I remember, like it was yesterday when we hit 1,000 subscribers, and you guys were cheering us on saying, before you know it, you'll be at 2,000, and we just can't believe it. We're so stoked, so thank you all so very much. So the way that the live stream will work today is that we're going to talk about post-cruise depression for the first 30 minutes or so, and then open it up to questions and answers in the last 15 to 30 minutes of the live stream for you. So anything that you might have questions about, go ahead and let us know then. It's easier if you hold your questions until about 12.30 or so, so that we don't miss them. But Mr. Cruise Tips TV will be keeping an eye on the questions so that we can, um, can we can make sure that we answer any question that's cruise related today. Usually we have time to get to all of them. So did everybody see the video that we released yesterday about our collaboration? Um, this is your little hint right here, my beautiful blanket that you see sitting on the back of my chair. We are very excited to be partnering with Minky Couture and Fathom Travel with all of you. Minky Couture has um, generously decided to donate one blanket for every blanket that you purchase to send to the families that are still in need in the island of St. Thomas and to make this even more exciting and cool and cruise related, Fathom Travel, who you will very much remember as Fathom Cruise Line, is going to be delivering, hand delivering those blankets on one of their voyages. Fathom is still doing voyages. Now, they're taking a special troop, a trip cruise, excuse me, on Crown Princess in the middle of January. So they kind of, I don't know if you'd call it a charter or if they're taking a group of Fathom travelers, but they are going to the Caribbean and they're going to be having a Fathom adventure. So they're still around. They're just doing things a little bit differently now. It's really exciting. So we'll keep you posted on that as well. But Fathom is going to be delivering those blankets for us and we're so appreciative that they volunteered to do that. And we're really happy with the way that that came together. So make sure that you check out the video from yesterday if you haven't seen it already. So our next two live streams are the next two Saturdays and we're gonna be live next Saturday, December 23rd. We're going to do all Q&A. We're calling it our eggnog fest. So bring your eggnog, bring your questions. We're going to have some pre-Christmas fun. And then on December 30th, Saturday, December 30th, noon Pacific time, same time, same place, right here on a Saturday, we're gonna talk about cruise goals. So now we are ready to get started and tell you our 10 ways to cure post-cruise depression. And what we would like for all of you to do is as we're doing that, we would like to, you to tell us what your post-cruise depression uh, cures are in the chat. And I'll come back and read some of them in a little while. But uh, my son is actually here today and he's he. I asked him today if he thought of any good cures cures or solutions or things to do to heal your post-cruise depression. And I really liked his, so he's gonna share it with us today. Son, are you ready? Yep. Okay, what is? what do you think is the best way to cure post-cruise so depression? before you go on the cruise, you better be ready. So what I do is, well, I don't always do it, but okay. sometimes I will buy something, well, not me, Uh huh. but before the cruise, and then at the end of the, and then I can only have it and use it at the end of the cruise, so I actually oh. have something to look forward to, too. Oh, I love that. So did you guys catch that? His tip is that you buy something or you have something to look forward to after the cruise. So you, you have like a nice surprise waiting for yourself. So for you, what would that be? Like, give me an example of something that might be for you. Like a video game or something. A video game or something? Yeah. Or like a book or something like that? Or Usually nice. a video game. Yeah. <laughs> High five, thank you so much. You did a good job, buddy. So my son said, you have to have something to look forward to. That's his tip. 
Definitely a good one. You did great. Good job, buddy. Thanks. So my number one tip is to relive your cruise memories when you get back by writing a review. I know you've seen the review that I wrote on our last cruise on cruiseline.com and several other cruises as well, but I think that this is a really great way to keep interacting with the cruise community for weeks, if not months, and it also helps you to kind of memorialize, if you will, or record the details of your trip. And I think that's one of my favorite things to do is when I get home, I write it all down and I share it with the world. And I feel like at least for the next few weeks, they have some good dialogue going on that. At cruiseline.com, people are making comments, they're asking questions, they're wanting more information, and that's exciting to me. Number two tip is to create a photo slideshow or some kind of a little movie with all of your photos taken from the trip. I like to use iMovie right on my phone. It's super easy to edit with and doesn't give me a whole lot of trouble. It was really easy for me to learn. And I think that that is something too that you know kind of goes along with tip number one is just really preserving those memories and getting the photos out there. Mr. Cruise Tips TV, did you have something you wanted to tell me? No, okay. All right, number three tip is to stay connected through your to your cruising community. And of course, what we're doing right now is one of the ways that we do that, right? You stay connected through Cruise Tips TV, through podcasts, forums, magazines, YouTubers. All of these things help us to feel alive in between cruises, right? I love that one. I love staying connected. I think that's a big one for me. Another favorite of mine is to recreate your favorite cocktails or even food recipes at home. Have you guys been following Princess this week on social media? They are doing the 12... 12 cocktails of princess, like 12 days of Christmas, and they're actually putting up these really quick recipes with visuals, um, like basically little mini videos of some of their most popular uh, cocktails at Princess Cruises, and I think that's awesome. You guys know you can also Google warm chocolate melting cake recipes from Carnival. I love doing things like that. I love recreating my favorite cocktails, and as most of you guys know, um, I discovered my favorite all-time cocktail on a princess cruise. It's called the Sam Sidekick, and it's that the one you see in all of my cruise vlogs. So it's gin, grapefruit juice, lime juice, and blackberry brandy in a martini glass. And I love that. So one of my um, one of my ways to kind of keep the keep the fun alive in between cruises. All right, next up is to watch for good deals. We we talk a lot about cruiseline.com here. You guys definitely by now you know that you need to set a price alert at cruiseline.com. I have a couple of price alerts set right now and they email me all the time. So I'll see an email that comes from cruiseline.com and it'll say Holland America, New Amsterdam, and it'll have a down arrow on it. It'll say down by 5%. And I know that way that I, if I'm shadowing or watching a cruise, following a cruise, that that's a good way for me to keep an eye on it and decide when to book it. So I, I think it's kind of nice to have a couple of cruises set up however you like to do your price alerts. That's how I do it. But I like to have a few. I think it's because I like the, the thrill of the hunt. It's fun. It's fun to try to find the best bargain, the best time to book. All right, next tip is to set aside a little spot in your closet to put things for your next cruise. So your little cruise treasures or things that are gonna be essentials for packing. It could be toiletries, a beautiful new set of packing cubes, a, you know, new luggage tags, whatever it may be. Put it in a box keep it somewhere and it gives you just this little opportunity to kind of stash things away. It also reduces the stress when you go to plan your next cruise, you got stuff already ready to go. And maybe you can decide along the way that you need to take things out, not interested anymore in, in taking those things along. But um, I think that's a great way to stay organized and stash those treasures away. All right, next up is to create a cruise keepsake. You could make a shadow box with a shell and some sand in it, if it's legal to take shells and sand from the place you went, of course, be careful. Maybe a ticket from a show that you went to or a shore excursion or uh, frame those photos that you bought on board, right? Don't we all do this thing where we buy the photos on board and then we stick them in an envelope in our closet? Ah, you guys, I do that all the time. I have this giant envelope full of photos. We really need to get them framed. So go to a discount store like TJ Maxx or Marshalls or Ross and get those puppies framed, get them on the walls, get them up on your dining room table, wherever you put your photos, post those things. Um, another thing that we like to do, we don't have cable in our house, but we do like to watch cruise stuff on TV. One of the coolest things we ever did as a family was to watch a documentary on YouTube or something, I don't even know, maybe it was Netflix, about that journey that went through the Inside Passage, the cruise that went through the Inside Passage, but there's so much more. There's like a revolving host of stuff you can watch on TV. There's Carnival's Network TV shows, so many documentaries, and if you're really, really serious about watching stuff on TV, you could even watch Love Boat reruns. I think it's fun to do that every so often. I don't do it all the time, but I think it's hilarious to watch those sometimes. So. 
Number nine, the one that I had chosen was actually the one that my son came up with today, and that is to consider timing. When you get home, have something to look forward to. Plan your cruise so that when you get home, you know you've got something out in front of you that's gonna keep you going. We kind of inadvertently did that on our Panama Canal cruise, and I did not necessarily plan this, but the fact that we came home to the holiday season has actually really minimized my post-cruise depression. Of course, I wish I had another cruise booked right now. Of course, I wish there was something going on that could, you know, that was a little bit more cruise related in my life, but how nice is it to know that Christmas is right around the corner? Maybe for you, it's a sporting event that you wanna go to or you wanna watch. Maybe it's a birthday party. It could be anything, but I think it's really nice to think, okay, look, I've got something on the, under, on the other end of that cruise that's worth looking forward to. And of course, as you guys all know, the ultimate cure, number 10, is to book another cruise, right? Is there any better way to get rid of <laughs> the depression than to book another cruise? So let me jump in and see what you guys are all chatting about right now. I think I lost my chat, so it'll take me just a moment. How's it going in there, Mr. Cruise Tips TV? Fine. Good. Susan Dykeman asked if you could tell her how to find that review on the website. You must have made a reference to a, a review. Sure. Susan Dykeman wants to know how about how to find my review on cruiseline.com. What you need to do is search for me on cruiseline.com and you can add me and find it in my profile or you can go to the ship that we were on. So go to Caribbean Princess and look through the reviews and you should find it there pretty close to the top, Susan. So there's several different ways that you can do that. Yeah. What other questions do we have coming in, Mr. Cruise Tips TV? Okay, sounds good. So I want to see how you guys, how you cure your post-cruise depression. Bob Larimer, this is a good one. Says, put your cruise pics in a digital photo frame at work and home. Bob, that is such a brilliant idea. I love it. <laughs> Steven said, METV has reruns of The Love Boat. That's awesome. I did not know that. Okay, Amanda says, this is a great tip, Amanda. Amanda says, I hang my door organizer up on my door with the stuff I take on a cruise and I fill every pocket. That is such a great idea. Okay, let's see here. All right. I uh, Sagusta said she's got her videos up on YouTube from her Alaska cruise. It's nice to relive it by watching them. I would love to watch them, Sagusta. Thank you for letting us know. We will definitely do that. All right, Dawn's Family Vacations. This is another clever tip, you guys. Take a favorite photo from the trip and have a coffee mug made from it. I get one done after every cruise and I have 46. Now, Dawn, you've been on 46 cruises. That is a lot. Good for you as a travel agent. I'm sure that gives people confidence that you know what you're talking about. And aren't you going on a cruise very soon? Okay, let's see here. Edna said, I keep buying souvenirs and I never give them. I'll make a gift basket with all my souvenirs and give it as a gift, LOL. That is a brilliant idea. Yeah, Sean, I know what you mean about the, the picture still sitting in your closet. It's so true, so true. Okay, I know there's gotta be more tips coming in here. I'm scrolling, bear with me, you guys. Uh, Mama Dot said Hobby Lobby has some nice frames, 50% off right now. Hey, thanks, Mama Dot, that's awesome. You need to give me some of those frames. Do you like my necklace today, Mama Dot? Look familiar? You guys, my mom bought me this beautiful necklace on our Panama Canal cruise. Isn't it gorgeous? It's a little anchor. It's very delicate and pretty. And she saw it in the gift shop and she said, if you want it, I'll buy it for you. And I said, of course I want it. Are you kidding me? So thanks, mom. I love it. All right, let's see what else you guys are talking about. Ooh, Rylan Scott said, I put all my little cruise souvenirs in a packing cube and just look through. I love it. I have this picture, this vision of you, Rylan, going like, ah, looking through the, the packing cube. That is a very good idea. Okay. Uh, Vegas Strong said, definitely plan another cruise. Yes. Becky said, I make a cruise scrapbook and leave it on my table. That's such a good idea. So, um, Becky, I'd like to hear what tool you use to make your scrapbook. Um, it sounds like you do it by hand. I've been making photo books and so has my, my family for a really long time using Shutterfly. Been a little frustrated lately with Shutterfly though. Um, their customer service seems to be slipping and their, the tool that you make the photos in is getting a little bit more uh, complicated. So Allison has a really good tip, you guys, and this is a good way to fend off the, the post-cruise depression before you get off the ship. And that is to plan on planning another cruise while you're on board. So you've just got something kind of right out in front of you when you get off that ship. That's a good idea. So Paula said they scrapbook with fun times, postcards, and pictures. That's a great idea. Excellent. 
Okay, Vernon's solution, I love it, Vernon. This is so you, Vernon. He says, just don't unpack. <laughs> <laughs> that is so funny. Bonnie said that she prints photos and gives all her cruise buddies small photo albums. That's a very nice idea. Kimberly, I love this one. Kimberly keeps a clear tote, that's a lot of K sounds, and adds things that you'll need for a cruise and cruise gifts that you wanna give people. I love you guys that you're all thinking about gifts. I think that's wonderful, okay. Robert said, I think sharing the videos you take on YouTube and Facebook will be a way to shake the blues and get others interested in cruising as well. Yeah, definitely. All right, see who we have. Okay, uh -huh. Jen P said, I've been splurging on going out to restaurants that I normally wouldn't pay so much for to have amazing meals. So withdrawals from amazing food isn't so severe. Jen, that's so true. And I have to tell you a funny story. So Jen, when we got back from our cruise, we had like a weird adjustment period with our son. Um, we would go out to dinner and he tried to order like multiple courses. <laughs> We're like, you know, they come over and they ask if you want dessert and we're like, no, he can't, you can't have dessert. You have to pay for that. And of course on a cruise, he would be like, I'd like a garden salad with a side of French dressing. I'll have the chicken and mashed potatoes and then, you know, two different kinds of ice cream for dessert. And so we had to say like, no, 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 we're not on the cruise anymore. You can't do that. You know, I mean, it's just, it's obviously not healthy. We don't eat dessert with every meal or anything. So I know. Okay. Tommy's here. Hey, Tommy from Always Be Booked. I piece together a mix of video and pictures and make a cruise montage to music using video software. It takes a second to learn, but you can teach yourself and it gets easier. I love your montages, Tommy. I think they're great. And I know they're a lot of work. I Believe me, I hear you, man. But keep doing them. They're really good. Hopefully all of you guys caught my interview with Tommy on Always Be Booked. It was so much fun. We talked for a full hour. Tommy asked brilliant, fun, different, unique, even some edgy questions. So if you haven't caught that, Tommy, is it episode 122? Gosh, I don't know, I need to look. Um, ooh, God, where did I get 122? I'll look that up. But if you guys haven't caught that yet, go to your iTunes, go to Always Be Booked and listen, it's really fun. All right, let's see here. Okay, I, I know there's more really great ideas coming in and I wanna make sure that I catch them. Let's see, okay. Tommy, oh, I'm sorry guys, it was episode 56 of Always Be Booked. Okay, I gave you lots of new podcasts there, Tommy. <laughs> okay, let's see. Oh, how fun, Nurse Nancy. You're planning a short weekend vacation the next month that you return to help the family blues. Yeah, I think that's a really good idea too. You know, sometimes it's hard to afford maybe a getaway, but if you can afford a short one or two night getaway and you don't spend all your money on cruises, maybe set aside a, you know, a little a little bit of money for something that can kind of tie you over. I think that's really important, especially during the winter months. If you're, you know, if you're able to do that, that can always be a good idea. Okay, what, what? Mr. Cruz, it's you. It's 56. Close. Close. <laughs> Tommy. <laughs> I know that's so funny. Sorry, Tommy. My math is really bad. Oh, my goodness sakes. <clears throat> I know. You guys are all talking about how your pictures stay in the closet. I love that. My goodness, there's so many comments. I'm scrolling up to see if I've missed any. Okay. Bonnie said lots of people have been trying to get the Princess Fettuccine Alfredo recipe. I know, Bonnie. I think that Princess's Fettuccine Alfredo is pretty classic, meaning I think it's probably your traditional egg yolk buttercream recipe. Um, I don't know if it has garlic in it. That's one thing I can't quite figure out is if they put garlic in it, but it's pretty traditional. I would love to get that too. <laughs> oh, thanks Mike and Cheryl. Mike and Cheryl said they were supposed to be on a cruise this time last year and it's us who got them through. Oh, you guys are so sweet. Remind me why you guys canceled that cruise. I don't remember. Okay. Um, ha -ha. Oh, Will, what a great idea. Will said, I spent today putting my photos in a PowerPoint to share at a Christmas family gathering. That is a very, very good idea. I love that. So you have kind of like a, a good old fashioned slideshow. How fun. Do you guys use like a projector or something? That's very cool. Okay. Let's see here, guys. What else? Got some fun ones here. All right, so um, Nona, I'm gonna go ahead and start reading some of the questions that I see here and start at the top with Nona's 918. And then Mr. Cruise Tips TV, if you have more questions for me after this, let me know, but I'll do that. Um, Nona said, is a cruise ideal for wheelchair bound people? That is a very excellent question. And the answer is sometimes. Um, I do believe that cruise ships can be excellent, excellent uh, types of vacations for people who are wheelchair bound. I think you should be careful about the cruise line that you choose. I have noticed that Princess Cruise Line 
in Holland America tend to have very good focus on helping people with mobility issues of all types, and that there are many, many people who travel in wheelchairs on both of those cruise lines. Now, with that said, there are some things that you, would, you want to watch out for. Um, you obviously will have the option to book a cabin for someone with a disability. You will be able to book an accessible cabin, which will be have a much larger entryway. The room will be larger. The bathroom will be set up for someone with those needs. And you definitely need to plan to do that. That should be the first thing that you do is make sure that on that ship, on that sailing, on that the itinerary, that you get an accessible stateroom. That would be my advice for you. Second, I would I would watch for an itinerary that has very minimal tender ports. You can definitely, on in some circumstances, you can take a wheelchair on a tender. Tenders are the little boats that take you from ship to shore when there is no dock. So it's not an easy process though, and it could make for some disappointment and stress if you're in a wheelchair. So if I were you, if I were planning my cruise, what I would do is probably try to choose a cruise with either very few or no tender ports whatsoever so that when you do get into port, if you and the person who's in the wheelchair do opt to go ashore, it's just a little bit easier to use the ramp and get them down that way than to get them onto the, a boat. And um, as I've mentioned in a previous vlog, when we were tendering at Princess Keys last month, the sea was very rocky and the, um, the little dock on the side of the ship and the boat were going like this. And it, it made for a very stressful wheel, wheelchair transfer that we witnessed and I wouldn't recommend it. I think it's something that I would avoid if I were traveling with someone in a wheelchair. So that's my two cents. There are a lot of people in our community that do cruise in wheelchairs and that have that knowledge. And I'm certainly um, happy to let them weigh in. Becky has a question. Can you take aerosol hairspray and hair dryer on Princess? Yes to both. We, you can. Uh, Rylan Scott said, have you guys ever been on a Hawaiian cruise? Rylan, no, we have not, but I very much want to. I would actually prefer to fly to the islands and do the cruises from over there rather than doing the 15 nights from LA with five sea days over and five sea days back. I think that's a little too many sea days and too much time off of work for me, but I would love to go do Pride of America or something like that over there, um, but it's really expensive. So it's probably not gonna be the top of our list, but um, we would definitely like to do that. Yes, okay, all right. Oh my gosh, you guys had to cancel Mike and Cheryl six days before you left. Oh, that's horrible, okay. Um, let's see here. Liberty Cruiser says they got that recipe, by the way. The fettuccine Alfredo recipe? Liberty Cruiser, you got the fettuccine Alfredo recipe? If you can share it with us, I'll post it on our Facebook page. And I can also post now things in a social media kind of capacity now here on YouTube. It's the coolest thing, but YouTube has added for channels with, I don't, we don't know how many subscribers you have to have, but all of a sudden one day we got this notification that we had this new community thing where we can post stuff here on YouTube. So for those of you who don't have social media channels that are always telling me like, look, how do I stay in touch with you guys? Because we can't always communicate through everything through YouTube, we can do it here. Let me know. Okay. Oh my goodness. Yes. Um, Jessica, yes, we do have an upcoming cruise planned. We are booked on Norwegian Bliss, but not until October of next year. So it's a very, very long time uh, until our next cruise. We hope that we will have another cruise that we book between now and then. But right now we have no idea what that will be. Um, we're just kind of like we generally do, we're regrouping financially. We're kind of waiting to see how things go. I like to stay very, um, very much at my my day job too during the first quarter. It's a time that I really like to be very present and not take a lot of time off of work because we're sort of always rebuilding. And so um, I don't usually plan huge vacations in the first quarter of the year for business reasons. So we'll see what happens, but there's a lot of different things on our mind, um, a lot of different cruises that we would love to take. Um, I, it's odd, I really have the, the cruise tour bug for Alaska, and we've been working with um, a travel agent to take a look at some of our options. It is very expensive. Um, for the cruise tours, the cruise and land combinations, we're pricing out Holland America, 
and keeping an eye on that for May, but that's a really, really expensive investment. So I'm not sure we're there yet. Um, some other things that would be very exciting would be somehow to magically find a way to pull off our dream cruise, which is Tahiti in the South Pacific, because our 20 year wedding anniversary is coming up in September. And I don't know, it would, it would take a miracle, but there's sometimes when you really put your mind to things, they can happen. So we'll see what happens. We're, we're, that's, a, that's a dream of ours. So hope that answers your question, Jessica. And also, I think that um, Suji also asked that question as well. Okay. All right. Jay Hicks says, should we plan to fly home the day we come back in or spend an extra day in Tampa? Jay Hicks, if you can spend the extra day, do it. It minimizes the rush to the airport, the depression, and just the whole overall downer of the cruise ending. So, yeah. Mm. Becky said, leaving to Mexican Riviera in March, are there a lot of flying bugs? No, Becky. We haven't had a lot of bug issues in Mexico. Exception would be if you're going into the jungle in a place like Puerto Vallarta to zip line or something, if you are going into one of those areas, I would definitely recommend you take some bug spray. Okay. Robert, you have an epic announcement. So you guys are 30 days out from your, your first cruise? Oh my gosh, wow, that's awesome. Tell us what cruise line you're going on. Okay, Amanda said, going on Splendor in February to Mexican Riviera, can't wait, have you been on it? Amanda, yes, we have been on Splendor. That's also another one we're considering because it is repositioning from Florida out to our hood. And I would love to jump on it because I haven't been on Splendor in a while. I love that ship. Um, Tommy from Always Be Booked, who's here today, also loves that ship. He loves that aft pool. Um, no kids allowed in that aft pool, really nice. Wake view, beautiful, great place to chill. Um, it's a good ship. It's bigger than the Miracle, by the way. It is, it is bigger and it feels bigger. It's great. So we're considering it. They have those cool cabins I love um, that I really want to try out. They're aft wrap balconies that are not priced like an aft wrap balcony. They're cheaper. It's really cool. So, okay. Nurse Nancy said, if you have faster to the fun on Carnival, would you do early debarkation just to avoid the crowds? We drive to and from. Yeah, I would do self debark, walk myself off not even necessarily as part of Faster to the Fun, but walk off with my own luggage and get in that car and bust, bust home. That's how I would do it. Okay, Gina said, husband and I are looking to buy a new set of luggage. Any good buys out there in your Amazon store? What do you look for in luggage? Any certain brands that you like that are not too expensive? Gina, I am working on collaborating with eBags to start sharing luggage deals with you guys. I have found really good things on ebags.com. Amazon store has good stuff in it, but the thing about Amazon is it's not the place to buy luggage. It's a, it's a place to buy luggage, but we wanted to try to get a little bit better connected with someone who just does luggage, packing cubes, you know, suitcases, duffels, backpacks, all of that stuff. So if you could bear with me for the next few weeks, I'm gonna try to start sharing some of those things. I see a three piece adorable it luggage set. What we look for is hard side. We no longer buy fabric because it gets ruined unless it's an exceptional quality with one exception. I would recommend the Travel Pro if you buy soft sided luggage or fabric luggage, they do seem to hold up well. Um, we look for 360 degree uh, wheels, meaning that the, the, the suitcase will spin without any stress at all. You can spin it on a dime. Like, you know, I, I'm, I'm not explaining myself well, but the suitcase should rotate 360 degrees. Uh, we also look for lightweight luggage. So those are our main, um, main things that we, we consider. We do have a really cool video on shopping for luggage, but I don't remember if it's on this channel or cruise gear. Is it on cruise gear, honey? It's on the cruise gear, I think. If, you have to tell her that we usually buy at TJ Maxx. Yeah, we do. We usually buy it at TJ Maxx, Marshalls, or Ross. So I buy big brands at discount stores. So that's usually what we do. I like It Luggage, Samsonite, Travel Pro, the bigger brands. Ricardo is great. Um, those are my favorite. Okay. All right. Bonnie, you purchased new luggage through eBags. Your Hanukkah gift. Happy Hanukkah, Bonnie. Yes, exactly. So it looks like Allison uses eBags for purchases of travel bags. Yes. We're going to start getting connected with them, you guys, hopefully. Okay. We should have a garage sale with all our bags. I know. My husband said we should have had a garage sale with all our bags. We did, actually. At our last garage sale, honey, we sold three. Because we have a problem. We have a, we have a suitcase problem. We have a problem. We have a suitcase problem. I have a problem. You're pretty good. I mean, I don't know. 
You you kept a few that we probably could have gotten rid of too. <laughs> oh my goodness sakes. Okay, I want to make sure I'm not missing questions. Um, Don's family vacation said, did you happen to see the Stingray area on Princess K? No, I didn't. Don, we enjoyed the cabana that day. We didn't venture out too much beyond that, but I would love to check it out. It sounds fun. All right. Did Mike and Cheryl's question about the GoPro get answered, honey? Oh, I missed it. Okay, Mike and Cheryl said, hi, Mr. Cruise Tips TV. Technical question. GoPro hero, debating about not sure if we should wait or other options. Do you think they should wait? And that's a tough one. I think if I were buying today, I would buy the five and not the six. Okay. Mike, if you're buying today, buy the five and not the six. That's what I would do. The five is nice because it's waterproof without a case. That's... So is the six, but the six is the a six. bit buggy right now. The six is buggy. Okay, so wait on the six. It's too buggy, Mike. I would hold tight. Uh -huh. Mama Dot, Delcy is an excellent brand too at discount stores, but also at Macy's. And I can attest to that. Because Mama Dot's beautiful aqua mid-size suitcase from Delcy is beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Jo Joy Wolf Channel says, hi, do you have any shampoo suggestions? Sure, I have loads of shampoo suggestions. Um, I don't know what you mean if you want brands or if you're looking for how to um, travel with your shampoo. I like the little um, squeezable bottles that you can pre-fill with your own stuff. And I use Matrix by Biolage on my hair, but on cruises, inevitably, I end up packing sample sizes from all my beauty boxes when I travel because I have, I've been accumulating them. So I don't generally transfer my own shampoo into those squeezable little bottles. But um, yes, Matrix by Biolage is my brand. Okay, Amanda Graves said, what port were you in when you swam with those whale sharks in Mexico? Amanda, we were in La Paz, which is on the Sea of Cortez. So if you think of the Baja Peninsula as the big sort of like boot that hangs down, um, the, the, this is up on the Sea of Cortez side and not the Pacific side, so the water is very different. It's very salt concentrated and lovely. And that was actually a surprise. We did not plan to swim with whale sharks. Our excursion was actually supposed to be to go to um, an island for the day, but due to high winds and waves, we were unable to do that. And when they proposed that we go swim with the whale sharks, my husband and I looked at each other and went like, okay, we decided we weren't gonna do that. Like when we were planning this cruise, we thought about it, we're like, heck no. Like we're really gonna take a little seven-year-old and throw them in the water with whale sharks? What are you, crazy? Of course not. But uh, yeah, we did it, and it was pretty exhilarating. I wish the water was clearer. The day that we were there, it was really murky. So you would be swimming along with a guide who's like pulling your hand to get you to get close to this giant mammal in the water against your body's instinct to swim towards a giant mammal in the water. And all of a sudden, those whale sharks were literally right in front of your face. And they give you specific instructions about how far away they want you to stay from the whale shark. And the whale sharks travel with their mouths open. So it's terrifying to be close to their mouths because they're like huge, like school bus size with their mouth open. You're like, I'm gonna get sucked in there, right? I'm gonna be like, what is it, Geppetto and um, Pinocchio in the whale? I have these horrible images of being sucked into the whale shark's mouth. But yeah, it's in La Paz. It's a life experience. The guides do take very good care of you. We did have some jellyfish when we were there. Um, you can suit up in a full wetsuit if you want to. The guides will generally let you do that. We did not do that because the water was warm enough, but in hindsight, I think I would have worn a wetsuit. I think I would have felt safer um, that way. So, yeah. All right. Leak, okay, dot .com mom is looking for leak-proof spray travel bottles. Any ideas? Um, I have to research that one for you because you know I don't want to recommend something I haven't used. So bear with me and I will try to put some in the shop in the next week. I don't have a pen or I would write that down. Mr. Cruise Tips TV, try to help me remember to find some leak proof spray bottles for dot com mom. Okay, all right. I know there's more questions coming in. Oh my gosh, Jada Gee needs to know you guys. If anybody can help her find hook magnets for the walls from Australia. I know we have them in our Amazon shop, but at this point you can't ship to Australia. I heard, Jada, that they're opening up an Amazon in Australia. Is that true? If, if they are, I would love to, we'd love to get involved in that. 
Rylan Scott said, do you like to bring a pack of water or even soda on a cruise? Yep, we sure do. Um, I don't bring water anymore because the cruise lines I sail with are cheap. Their but water is cheap and I just buy it and have it waiting in the room, but we always do take soda. My husband likes Diet Coke and I like LaCroix. Nurse Nancy, what do I think of a mother-daughter cruise date? I think it sounds good. I joke with my mom that I'm going to go on a river cruise with her, just her and me. Um, I think it'd be really great. I know I missed a question up higher here, so I'm going to scroll up. Those of you who just asked, please bear with me. Um, Justin, I've never stayed in a Havana cabin. Um, I don't, I would not stay in a Havana cabin, probably the ones with the, um, that are along the promenade deck, because I don't want people walking by my cabins. That would be completely out of the question for me. Um, value and the Haven experience. The Haven I've heard is an excellent experience if you can afford it. Okay. Um, questions are coming in hot here. Jared said, do you know what types of Christmas activities or shows Princess has on Ruby? You can expect wonderful pr um, Christmas programming on Princess. I don't know specifically about shows. The food will be excellent and they will have a lot for you. It varies a little bit. So my suggestion is that you go onto cruiseline.com and you search for the Ruby patterns for Christmas and see if you can find them because I don't want to, I don't know what they did last year may not be the same as this year. Thank you, Liberty Cruiser, for posting that recipe for us. Oh, no way. Stu from Riptism is here, you guys. Hey, Stu, this is your first live stream. Nice to see you. Um, Stu cruises with Tommy from Always Be Booked, you guys. He's a fitness buff, and he has a cool um, workout regimen called Riptism that you guys could check out if you want to get all cut for the new year. Super glad to have you here. Roxanne said, how common is it for spinner wheels to be damaged and broke off? Never had a spinner wheel break off, Roxanne. I couldn't tell you. Um, aha, uh -huh. Rylan said, I have a huge problem with overpacking. How about you? Rylan, I'm a reformed overpacker. I don't believe that I have that problem anymore because I successfully packed carry-on only for our cruise. And I'm super proud of myself, but at the core of my soul, I am an overpacker. So yeah. For sure. Okay, so at this point, I'm gonna go down to the bottom and look for your questions, everybody. Okay, all right. Cruising with Wheels popped in to say the Haven Garden Villa is just awesome. Hey, Kevin, hope you're having a good day at work. I know it's a busy season for you, and thanks for the shout out today on your, um, your YouTube channel. It was very sweet, I really appreciate it. Okay, let's see. Okay. There are so many questions. Let's go back to an old one. Okay, help me, Mr. Chris Tips TV. Vanessa Vanderpool. Vanessa, coming at you. Hi, could you explain the TSA requirements about fluids on a cruise? Okay, there are no TSA requirements for fluids on a cruise. They're just on a flight. So I'm going to answer your question literally as if you're asking me if you have to worry about it on a cruise and you don't. You can't take, you can't take alcohol on any major cruise line except for two bottles of wine. That policy varies by cruise line, so you really shouldn't even listen to me. You should check your cruise line policy, but you can take liquids. You can take a full bottle of shampoo, a full bottle of mouthwash, whatever you want on your cruise. Don't worry about it. So if you're flying, you have to be concerned with that. Dakota, oh, it's Frank. Oh, sorry, Frank. I thought it was Kevin. Sorry, sorry. Go ahead. Dakota Lynn says, hi, Sherry. How does using cash for your onboard charge card work? Do you mm. have to get a down payment ahead of time? Or a deposit? Or a collective bill? You know what, this is one for the cruising community. You guys, what happens when you're cruising with cash and you don't put a credit card down? Do you have to put cash down at the front desk? I don't know, I'd like to hear from you guys. Maybe somebody can help with that. Kelly Trapasso says, any tips on flying and packing diapers for three kids in diapers? Should I buy through the cruise line? Kelly wants to know if she should buy the diapers through the cruise line. Oh, for three kids? Um, I think I would have them Amazon shipped to my hotel and take them onto the cruise with you. I would not buy them on the cruise. They're very expensive and for three children, I think that the price comparison for three kids is gonna to be totally crazy to buy them on board. So if I were you, I would ship them or depending on your airline's baggage policy, I would take them with you. I hate to say it, but those things are no fun to buy on board. And if you're partial to a certain type of diaper, you're gonna be very limited on the cruise, okay. Hmm. Kay Kaylee Stevens says, how many cruises have you been on? Kaylee, we've been on about maybe 28 or 29. Um, we did it. We had to count them and do a video on it because I always lose track. So if you look back to our Vlogtoberfest videos, you can see one where we count out every cruise. And I think I probably got my math wrong. Knowing me, I probably still got my math wrong. But somewhere 28 or 29, didn't I? Yeah, there's all these comments in there that are like, 
if you had 14 plus 16 is actually this. And I was like, oh, I can't. See, this is why. This is why I don't count my cruises. But we're getting close to 30. Who's counting? Yeah. Okay, so always be booked as answering the cash at the front desk question, guys. Okay, so cash at the front desk. Drawback is that you don't get it back until they mail you a check that, for what you didn't spend. Okay, Tommy's saying, you guys, you have to put a cash deposit down at the front desk if you're not sailing with a credit card. Okay. All right, Justin said you can deposit cash on Carnival through the Carnival. SNS ATMs load up more when you need it. Okay, good to know. What are the charges like, Justin, for the ATMs? Are they are the service charges bad? Um, Kimberly, I don't know if Royal Caribbean does tea time, but maybe somebody here can tell us. Guys, does anybody know if Royal Caribbean does tea time? Okay. Wow, the questions are coming in faster than I can see them. Um, Amanda said, have you ever been on the Norwegian Escape? No, Amanda, we haven't. And the closest thing we'll probably get to that is that we're going on Norwegian Bliss in October, which is really similar to the Escape. Um, Vegas Strong, formerly Suji, said, how far in advance do you recommend booking airline tickets? Absolutely as far as you possibly can. I booked my airline tickets like in maybe March for a November cruise that I knew was going to be during the Thanksgiving period. So, um, yeah. I have one last question from Jeff. Jeff, okay. He wants to know if you heard about the hidden camera on Carnival Cruise. Jeff, have I heard about a hidden, a hidden camera on Carnival? I have. You have? What's this hidden camera? Behind the TV, there was a small hidden camera that the family found. What? Yeah. Is this a news story? Yeah. Really? Yes. Creepy. Very. I did not know about this. So a, a family found a hidden camera behind their TV, mm -hmm. pointing what direction? At the bed. At the bed. Oh, fantastic. Creepy. Creepy. Ooh, no, I had not heard anything about this. How come you didn't tell me? Because it's, it's creepy it's and weird. Yeah. Wow, that is really odd. Did they track down who put the camera there? They haven't. They're they haven't. They're doing an investigation. There's something off there. Something's not right. It does seem really odd, you guys. That is creepy. Ooh, I don't like that. Justin said, how do you feel about the loyalty match program and MSC? Wish Royal would do something like it. Justin, I think it's the best thing about MSC. I think it's brilliant. Um, it, I don't often think about cruising with MSC because I don't know that they've really, um, I, that their product is really in line with what I'm accustomed to, but, um, or any real North American cruiser maybe is, but that would be one thing that would get me to cruise with them. My necklace is on my mic. Thank you. Okay, so we don't want audio issues here, you guys. Let's fix Mr. Microphone. I'm gonna move the microphone a little bit too. Okay, sound okay, honey? Okay, more questions coming in. Oh my goodness, you guys. I'm so sorry I'm not keeping up with them. I'm trying to um, scroll down a little bit. Okay, uh, Jada Gee wants to know if you're allowed to bring plastic water bottles on carnival cruises leaving from Australia. I don't know, Jada. A lot of questions I can't answer today, you guys. I'm not sure about the Australia part, but in the US, you cannot take plastic bottles. Okay. Fran said you could buy bulk diapers at Walgreens or other drugstores when you arrive the day before the cruise. Yes, yes, yes. Very good advice. Okay. All right. Let's see here. Kimberly has another perspective on how the cash thing worked on Carnival. Kimberly said, I've used cash for my sale and sign card. I've done it through the check-in process. And I was able to get what I didn't use back before I left. This was on Carnival. Very good. Liberty Cruiser said Royal Caribbean did not have tea time in November. Okay. All right. Sean said they used cash on their cruise. And when they got to the terminal, they asked cash or card. And if you need to add cash, you can go to the front desk and add more cash to your account. Okay. Very good information, you guys. Very cool. Excellent. I know that there's more questions. Bear with me. Yeah, really creepy about the camera, you guys. That is so weird. Um, okay, Katrina said, what would you put aside for extra money to have on the cruise with you for spending money? Uh, Katrina, it's a very personal thing. Probably a few hundred dollars, but it's not so much that you're going to use it on the ship. You're going to use it in port. So I think for most people, $200 to $800 is generally good, but I can't really answer that question because I don't know what you're going to buy. Okay. Yeah, everybody is agreeing with me that we definitely want to book those um, those airline tickets earlier, the better. Excellent. Todd wants to know if there's any tips for Victoria, BC when your port time is 7 p.m. Todd, definitely walking around the Inner Harbor can be lovely. Take a cab to the Inner Harbor. 
and walk around that area, go inside the Empress Hotel, even take a taxi cab tour. The taxi cabs will be waiting there for you, and that's what we did one time. We just had him drive us around to all the major sites, and it was awesome. Amanda, my eyes look great. Thank you, Amanda. I've been using my eye gel. I love it. It's the best. Okay. All right, so Trisha, let's see here. They're saying that they do have tea time on Royal. They're, um, I'm not sure. I can't really understand the comment here, but it sounds like that may be something. Okay. Oh, thanks for complimenting me on my sweater, Cheryl. It's actually a thermal shirt. I'm going to show it to you. Um, it says, oh, snap, and it's a little gingerbread man. It's another one of my pajama shirts from um, Old Navy. So next to the flannel jammies, they sell these, these thermal tops. And I went back and got some more. I think I wore one on last Saturday's live stream, too. Um, let's see here. Caleb Sen said, do you like sea days or port days better? I'm a port day girl. I like port days. I like to be moving and grooving. I like sea days too, but okay. Um, hmm. You guys are talking about that creepy story, that camera story. That is awful. Oh my goodness. Okay. So now's that time guys, when we're a few minutes away from wrapping up. And if I've missed your question, I'd like for you to type it in right now. I see Robert's got one. Would you suggest taking a shore excursion in every port or just taking them in the town where you're at? Um, Robert, it depends on the cruise. Um, sometimes we'll book an excursion in every single port. However, I don't always book them through the cruise line by any means. I'm getting a lot more confident in not booking through the cruise line. Okay. Um, TP said, any additional, additional tips on how to avoid norovirus on ships other than frequent hand washing? Yes, I do have lots of tips for you. One. When you get to your room, wipe your room down with the norovirus wipes. You can find them in our shop, um, amazon.com forward slash shop forward slash cruise tips TV. They kill norovirus. Number two, when you go to the buffet, if you go to the buffet, after you touch all of the utensils, that's when you wash your hands after, not before, or use alcohol-based hand sanitizing wipes, which sometimes do not kill norovirus. So that's another thing. Do not use public restrooms on the ship. Use the restrooms in your cabin. Those are the best anti-norovirus tips that we can give you. Gwen, yes, we have stayed on the ship during a port day several times. In Ensenada, generally speaking, we do that. And also in Nassau on the Bahamas, I think we did it once. Excellent. Okay, Bonnie, you got the wipes. Yes, good idea. Stephanie, should you bring a jacket for your February cruise? Stephanie, depends on where you're going, but the answer is probably yes, no matter where you're going. Because um, if it's February, no matter where you're getting off that ship, it could be cool. I heard that that Miami and Florida, South Florida, had a, a, a cold front come through a few weeks ago when it was 51 degrees when people were getting off their ships in Miami. So you probably need your jacket. Okay, Night Audit, you are flying to Orlando. You guys, let's give Night Audit a big Bon Voyage. He's going on his cruise, yay! That's so exciting, Bon Voyage to you guys. I can't believe this happened. Finally, woohoo! Okay, what other questions do we have coming in, you guys? Oh, Nurse Nancy, I'm so sorry that the FabFitFun winter box sold out. That thing does sell out. They do. And I heard the editor's box is wonderful. I don't have an editor's box, but somebody told me this morning that they got it. I'm so sorry. Did you mention the wipes for the norovirus that we have? Yes. Okay. Specific. I clearly told them where that, yeah. Did you actually show your... Your blanket too. Oh, did you guys, did you see the blanket earlier? I think I showed it briefly, but for those of you who want to get a closer look at the um, Minky Couture blanket from our special kind of fundraiser that we're doing for the victims of the hurricane in St. Thomas, this is my Minky Couture blanket. I'm actually going to stand up and show you how big it is. What are you doing, hun? Oh, you're going to hold it for me? Okay, you guys are seeing my jammies. I always wear jammy bottoms when I'm doing a live stream. Did you know that? Okay, my husband is showing you my Minky. This is my minky blanket, aww. Oh, I'm covering the mic. You're covering the mic. So this is the adult sized charcoal anchor blanket. It is giant. Um, I snuggle with it on the couch when I'm watching TV or whatever in the evening time. And then when um, I go to bed at night, my husband, because it's winter time and it's cold where we live, he puts this on top of the covers on my side of the bed. So it's huge, but they have smaller ones too. I wish I could show you how big it is, but it's, I think it might be 50 by 70 inches or something, but isn't it pretty, you guys? I love it. The other thing I wanted to tell you about this blanket is it's really heavy. This is probably, if I had to guess, five or six pounds. But um, the inside of it is this gorgeous 
soft kind of somebody gail i think you had said it's kind of like an animal it really is it feels like a super soft little poodle or something so super soft on this side and then the other side is a different fabric but it's also really soft I, it really is very minky i mean that's a good description but i'm really excited about this little campaign and i just would love to see people getting such a wonderful surprise um, in St. Thomas in January when Fathom goes down there to deliver all the blankets. I know that they are a premium product and they're not in everyone's budget. I will not be buying 10 of them myself. They are expensive. Sorry guys, mic issues. But um, they are beautiful and they have baby ones too. So for those of you who are looking for baby gifts, um, with the 40% off discount code that we have, the baby ones are pretty reasonable. So another option. All right. Okay. <laughs> I am going to look for last minute questions coming in. Oh, I'm sorry, Night Audit, that you cannot see the stream. Make sure, honey, will you give Night Audit a big bon voyage and tell him we gave him a shout out? He has to watch it when he gets home because he can't hear us. So he can only see the chat. So will you write something in the chat for him for me? Bye. Yeah, no, tell him bon voyage. He's on an airplane on the way to his cruise and he missed his shout out because he can't hear us. I know. Okay, so cool. All right, you guys. Oh yeah, Night Audit's getting lots of Bon Voyages from our community, so that's very, very good. All right, so last minute questions coming in. Carnival Miracle, Jay Hicks, yeah, take a few extra hangers with you. I would, on Carnival, you probably need some extra hangers. They'll have some, but they won't have a million. Okay, any other last minute questions? I think we are, I think we're good on questions, you guys. Please forgive me um, if, I have missed your question. If I've missed your question today, what I'd love for you to do is I would love for you to wait until this live stream saves to the replay and leave your question in the comments and we'll take good care of you. We will see you next Saturday the 23rd, two days before Christmas for our Nog Fest Q&A, all fun, relaxed Q&A together for as long as it takes to answer all of the questions. Justin, my VIFP rank, um, we are, I think we're still gold. We're moving towards the next one on um, Carnival. I'd love to get to Platinum on Carnival. That would be my goal. And thank you guys so, so, so very much for tuning in today. Uh, be sure to catch the video about our Minky Blanket collaboration with Fathom Cruise Line. It was posted last night. We would love for all of you to check it out and share it. Even if you cannot buy a blanket, that is okay. Share it with some friends. That's all we ask. We will be so appreciative. If you haven't subscribed to our little channel, consider doing so. Turn on those little notifications too so you know when we're live. And we will see you guys next Saturday. Thank you so much. Do not get overwhelmed this week with Christmas shopping and all that crazy stuff. Try to relax, enjoy your family. And until next time, we'll see you on the high seas. Bye. Cruise around the week. <laughs>